Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers, that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque. Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod. Pray for us. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, on this first Friday of the month, we consecrate ourselves once again to the most sacred heart of Jesus. Today, we also celebrate the memorial of St. Charles Borromeo, an exemplary bishop and pastor whose holiness and pastoral charity brought about renewal in the Church. 
Let us now prepare ourselves to celebrate this Mass. Let us be sorry for our sins, and let us entrust ourselves to God's merciful love. Lord Jesus, you show us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Good Shepherd, leading us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Preserve in the midst of your people, we ask, O Lord, the spirit with which you fill the Bishop St. Charles Borromeo, that your church may be constantly renewed and by conforming herself to the likeness of Christ, may show his face to the world, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Join with others in being imitators of me, brothers and sisters and observe those who thus conduct themselves according to the model you have in us. For many, as I have often told you, and now tell you even in tears, conduct themselves as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Their God is their stomach. Their glory is in their shame. Their minds are occupied with earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we also await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will change our lowly body to conform with His glorified body by the power that enables Him also to bring all things into subjection to Himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, in this way stand firm in the Lord, beloved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoiced because they said to me, We will go up to the house of the Lord, and now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem built as a city with compact unity. To it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. According to the decree for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. In it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Please stand. Whoever keeps the word of Christ, the love of God is truly perfected in him.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, A rich man had a steward who was reported to him for squandering his property. He summoned him and said, What is this I hear about you? Prepare a full account of your stewardship, because you can no longer be my steward. The steward said to himself, What shall I do? Now that my master is taking the position of steward away from me, I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I know what I shall do, so that when I am removed from the stewardship, they may welcome me into their homes. He called in his master's debtors one by one. To the first he said, How much do you owe my master? He replied, One hundred measures of olive oil. He said to him, Here is your promissory note. Sit down and quickly write one for fifty. Then to another he said, And you, how much do you owe? He replied, One hundred measures of wheat. He said to him, Here is your promissory note, write one for eighty. And the master commended that dishonest steward for acting prudently. For the children of this world are more prudent in dealing with their own generation than the children of light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, it must be said that the parable of Jesus that we heard in today's Gospel is not meant to praise dishonesty. The master in the story of Jesus did not praise the steward, his servant, because of his dishonesty. Because dishonesty should never be praised. The steward was praised because of his ability to find ways in order to secure his future because his master fired him from his job. The servant was commended because of his creativity. He was able to look for some solutions in order to save himself. The servant asked a very essential question after being told that he will no longer be a servant. He asked himself, what shall I do? And that question propelled him to find solutions. St. Paul is also an example of a person who would usually ask the question, What shall I do? He would not have been a great apostle and a great missionary of the church if he just maintained the status quo. He would not have been a well-known preacher of Jesus' gospel if he did not think, as it were, outside the box. St. Paul would usually ask, What shall I do? What more shall I do? If he was not accepted in one, in one place, 
he would move to another in order to continue his mission. Nothing would stop him. No problem would prevent him from doing the work entrusted to him. He would always find some ways. He would always look for solutions. This is also the example of St. Charles Borromeo, whose memorial we celebrate today. St. Charles Borromeo has a special place in my heart because I came from the seminary of the Archdiocese of Manila in Guadalupe, in Makati, named after San Carlos. Both Father Kali and I came from San Carlos Seminary, and the new priests coming to the Manila Cathedral, Monsignor Roli de la Cruz and Father Bong Bayaras also studied and were trained at San Carlos Seminary in Makati. San Carlos lived at the time when there was nepotism in the church. That was about the 16th century. San Carlos was the nephew of Pope Pius IV. And because of that, at a very young age of 22, San Carlos was already made a cardinal by his uncle, the Pope. Not only that, he was also made the secretary of the Vatican State, like a prime minister. San Carlos could have been part of the problem. Problema na isang pamilya lang ang namumuno, may kapangyarihan sa simbahan. He could have been part of the problem. But the holiness of St. Charles led him to ask, What shall I do? And because of that, instead of becoming part of the problem, he became part of the solution. At the time when bishops did not reside in their dioceses, they were like absentee landlords. St. Charles decided to stay and live in Milan, where his uncle appointed him as archbishop. He would visit churches, parishes. He would visit communities, something unknown at the time. He was a true pastor, a true shepherd because he knew that it is by doing these things that there could be renewal, change, and solutions to the problems of the church at that time. That is why they said that St. Charles was a practical genius. He was intelligent in a practical way because he would always find solutions to any problem. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, there are people who would always see problems, only problems. May mga tao na palaging yung problema lamang ang nakikita May mga tao na lalapit sa iyo at paglapit sa iyo tiyak. Pag lumapit sa iyo, may problemang dinadala. But there are people who would see problems but would always think of solutions. There will be people who would see problems but would also ask, what shall I do? What could we do? Yung mga taong lalapit sa'yo at sasabihin, ito po, may problema tayo. Pero may nakikita na po akong solusyon. Meron na po tayong paraan na pwedeng gawin 
para malutas ang problema. There are people who are part of the problem, but there are people who are part of the solution. Anong klasing tao tayo? My dear brothers and sisters, like the dishonest steward in the parable of Jesus, like St. Paul, and like St. Charles Borromeo, let us not be parts of the problem. Let us be part of the solution. And if we could not find any solution yet, let us not just add to the problem. Please stand. We make our prayers to the Father who has called us to be faithful stewards in using the goods of the earth for the benefit of all. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Church may be conscious of her responsibility to promote social justice in the community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That government officials may be worthy of the people's trust, and may they not desire selfish gains in the exercise of their office. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That employers and workers may be honest and respectful to one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may be given the gift of patience in their illness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our beloved dead may reap the fruits of their labors in God's eternal kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in silence for our personal petitions. We remember the people who need our prayers and all the intentions offered in this Mass. Heavenly Father, help us to be faithful stewards of your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Look, O Lord, upon the offering placed on your altar to in commemoration of St. Charles, and grant by the power of this sacrifice that as you made him an attentive pastor, outstanding in the merit of his virtues, so you may make us abound in good fruit by our works, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Charles, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Charles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray to the Father as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. May the sacred mysteries of which we have partaken, O Lord, we pray, give us that determination which made St. Charles faithful in ministry and fervent in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.
Thank <laughs> you.